A lot of parents are worried about what to do with their children in a medical emergency after waiting times are going getting so long in the emergency room, they're lasting for hours, especially if you're trying to get into Golisano Children's Hospital with their infant children. I'm Matt Mulcahy. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Coleman. Wait times have been getting longer and longer at Syracuse area hospitals recently. Tonight, some are reporting hours long wait times for emergency care. According to the state's website, right now, emergency patients arriving to the ER will have to wait more than three hours at both Upstate University Hospital and Upstate Community Hospital. The wait time is even longer at Upstate Golisano Children's Hospital. Patients showing up now will have to wait an average of more than four hours to see a doctor. Connor White spoke to parents concerned about these wait times. He's live tonight from Golisano. Connor? Megan, the mother that you're about to meet came here to Golisano's last week at 6 a.m. on Thursday. And they wouldn't actually get a room up in the hospital building until midnight that same day, 18 hours later. Today, Peggy Riccardi is breathing a little easier, walking with her four-week-old daughter Beverly on a beautiful October day. This time last week, Beverly's RSV symptoms were getting worse. She was having a lot of trouble breathing, so obviously I wanted to get her to the ER. Riccardi says they were seen quickly, thinking they got lucky thanks to her daughter's age. But they didn't get to immediately move on from the ER. The doctor who admitted her said that the hospital was pretty full. He was very upfront about it, um, that it would take a while. I wasn't expecting 18 hours. <laughs> it's how long they remained in the emergency room waiting for a spot in Galasanos. What if she had actually had gone into respiratory distress and she couldn't get the help that she needed? So, I mean... It was a little scary. They're not alone. The emergency room was packed like sardines. And I felt, uh, frankly, unsafe waiting um, there for my daughter to be seen because she was so struggling so hard to breathe. The Bott family waited an hour Friday night at Upstate's ER to get help for their three-week-old, also suffering from RSV. They moved on to Upstate's community campus, saying they got help quickly and were transported back to Galasano's by ambulance. It's just scary and, like, um... We have friends with, with younger children too and like worry about them having to go through like the same thing or just anybody in the community. Both families told me they're so thankful to the staff that were on hand, saying in the end they received amazing care and attention. But they're concerned about what these wait times mean for the future. I think that's just how it, everything is with COVID right now and unfortunately the cuts have definitely like caused a part of that. but. The staff there was amazing. Like, they, they really made sure that she was okay. Upstate's emergency medicine director tells us tonight that this is the worst crisis that he's seen for emergency medicine throughout his entire career. He's saying there's no quick fix. And while both COVID and the recent state vaccine mandate has exacerbated things, this is ultimately a nursing shortage that has been looming for American health care for a few decades now. And he's expecting it to get worse in the interim. Thank you, Wayne. With kids back in the classroom this fall, COVID-19 is still posing a challenge for schools across the region. But with those obstacles come victories. Tony Black explains. The Fulton City School District has had 114 positive COVID-19 cases since the start of school. Most of our districts have been back for a month now when are faced with COVID struggles every time buses drop the kids off. We have to maintain that level of, of um, excellence that we're striving for to try to keep um, everyone in school teaching and learning on a daily basis. A month into the new school year and districts have been faced with many challenges and victories. Back to full in-person learning and districts go face to face with COVID-19 every day. The biggest challenge is just making sure that, um, you know, we can meet all of our logistics, you know, three and a half feet between the desks. Fulton Superintendent really Brian Polvino says there are new challenges each day. The impacts from COVID being one of them. A quarantine in a different district could impact us because we have staff that live there. While there have been hurdles, the superintendent says there have also been triumphs this year. We're just so grateful to have all of our staff and students uh, back going full time. I did some math today to find out how many cases among staff, students and teachers have been reported so far. 
more than 1,200 positive cases across Onondaga County schools, 609 in Oswego County, about 70 in both Cortland and Tompkins County, 181 in Cayuga, about 150 in Madison, and just over 400 in Oneida County, a total of 2,759 cases in central New York schools. Any number that was higher than zero is too high. Many school districts have had to tackle COVID head-on. The Rome City School District went completely remote for a week earlier this month because of bus drivers testing positive, meaning they couldn't transport kids. Students at Elmcrest Elementary in Liverpool will return to in-person learning tomorrow. The school is virtual because of positive cases and quarantines. One struggle for districts in Onondaga County has been trying to increase participation in the voluntary COVID-19 testing. The county wants to test 10% of each participating district a week, but right now they're averaging about 5% across all of the schools that are participating. Fulton is in talks with different vendors to try and get tests so that they can administer in their district. Now more on that vaccine mandate. A federal judge ruled that New York must allow health care workers religious exemptions from a statewide vaccine mandate as the lawsuit challenging the requirement continues. The ruling also prevents the state from enforcing any requirement that employers deny religious exemptions, even if outside of the health care field. Our Samantha Croston's in after speaking with a health care worker about these new developments from the federal court today. Sam? There are some health care workers who have been anxiously awaiting October 12th because they knew a decision was coming that could alter the course of their life. One health care worker I spoke with says not getting vaccinated is a hill she would die on, but desperately wants to keep working in her chosen field. Jenna Norman is a cardiac sonographer at Oneida Healthcare. She won't get the vaccine and has a religious exemption. It's just such a relief today to know that we get to keep our jobs and get to keep doing what we love. A federal judge says New York can't deny religious exemptions for the COVID-19 vaccine. Norman is one of about 40 employees at Oneida Healthcare who has a religious exemption. There's just not enough safety studies done on the vaccine, especially long term to make me feel comfortable injecting that into my body. Norman has not had a vaccine in 10 years and says she wishes that there was an option to opt out of the vaccine and wear a mask, similarly to what she does during the flu season. But that's not an option. And in the meantime, she's glad her exemption is still intact. With us winning today, it sets a different precedent for the teachers, for the police officers, for the corrections officers, for the firefighters that don't want this in their bodies. And in the case that the decision does get reversed, Norman says there is nothing that could change her mind about getting the vaccine. Even though she has spent 18 years in healthcare, she says she would quit her job. 